Welcome in everybody to this week's edition of Valpo Baseball Weekly. Brian Vickery with you. Glad to be joined by the head coach of the Valpo Baseball Program, Brian Schmack. Valpo Baseball Weekly is brought to you by our friends at Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute. And we look back at a, a weekend and specifically a day of baseball on Friday. And before we talk about the games themselves, we have to talk about the weather. What was it like to play through all the elements in Friday's doubleheader against St. Bonaventure? Yeah, I mean, at some point it just became kind of crazy, you know what I mean, from getting pulled off the field because the rain was sideways to thunderstorm warnings, uh, snow, rainbows. I mean, it was just we had every season in, in, in four innings there, you know. So, uh, and like I've said before, we're kind of used to it at this point. We've played a lot of games in, in just non-baseball weather, so to speak. So um, it's just another weekend with it. We've talked before about the – streaming capabilities being added to Emory G. Bauer Field. I think it bears repeating after the first streamed game this weekend. Uh, what does it mean to have that capability and for parents and families and fans and alumni to be able to follow from across the country? Yeah, just that. I mean, you know, it's funny to get, you know, texts from people and an alum and friends and say, hey, watch the game. And it was pretty cool and this, that and the other. So, uh, you know, we've never had that opportunity. So to have it at home and well, hey, the field looks great from that point of view, this, that, and the other. So, I mean, it's uh, it's special, you know, and it, it gives us the opportunity, obviously, to have a replay, you know, to to, to do what other programs are doing and, and to, to feel like if there's things that go wrong in the game, we can correct those, you know, in real time. So uh, we're looking forward to the full capabilities as the season goes on. Let's talk about your pitching staff on Friday. 17 strikeouts in each game, struck out 34 batters over the course of the day. Is to what stood out to you about the staff? How were you able to do that on Friday? Well, you know, we wanted to throw the ball over the plate, and that was kind of our main concern was, like I said, worrying about ourselves this weekend and, and not who we were playing. And, and for us to be successful, we have to do the things that make us successful, which is throw the ball over the plate, field it, put the ball in play, you know, and we were able to, go to accomplish that on the mound. So, um, you know, we've always talked about you'll strike out more guys by, by throwing strikes. And, uh, that seemed to be uh, the case this weekend. So happy for the guys to get the, you know, the statistical reward, I guess. But, um, you know, obviously the two dubs was, was important too. Talk about the offense. A lot of hits in game one, season high for hits in the first game, season high for walks in the second game. You kind of produced runs in a different way in the second game. So you look back at the day, what stands out to you about the approach offensively? Um, yeah, it was kind of crazy. You know, I think we had a couple, we had guys on in the first game. We didn't, we couldn't seem to get that big hit early on. And, and I think Caleb had one um, with two outs, uh, two strikes, I believe too, that, that brought the two in to tie the game. And then I think, you know, later on in the game, Brock had the three run homer when, when, you know, we had kind of scuffled and then he got to two outs and he hit the home run to give us a little bit of breathing room. So uh, timely hitting was probably more important than anything in, in, in that game. And then, you know, with the walks, I mean, it's just one of those games where you just have to be able to take advantage of them. And, and we did. So uh, the, the free pass is never good. And, and for teams that, um, you know, uh, in, in our situation, to be able to take advantage of that and score on those is huge because you don't want to squander those when they're giving those to you. Let's talk about the bullpen. The first game, another game where your back end closed it out, Nathan Chasey, Bobby Nowak. Uh, what stood out about that combo at the back end of some of these close games and what makes their stuff? applicable to the back end of games uh they're they're consistent and they're reliable at this point they've been throwing the ball over the plate and that's what we want you know we don't want the you know the wild card of how's he going to be today and i hope he's good type stuff we just really know what we're going to get from those guys and they've got good mentality for that type of uh, situation where uh it doesn't seem like they're you know the pressure let's say of of you know um up one run and, and the guys on base really affects them so uh, at this point, they'll continue to see those opportunities. So uh, it's, it's worked out well. Final stretch of non-conference play continues this week against Purdue Fort Wayne on Tuesday, then a series against UIC coming up this weekend. There he is, the head coach of the Valpo Baseball Program, Brian Schmack. For, for all the latest in Valpo Baseball, you can follow it on social media or visit valpoathletics.com. This has been Valpo Baseball Weekly, and it's brought to you by Lakeshore Bone and Joint Institute.